watching the movie along with us, you should have just heard the the wonderful tones of the Canon Films logo. Hello, I'm Mike. I'm Rich. And I'm Jay. And you're now listening to our commentary track on the 1986 or 7 film, Masters of the Universe. Starring Dolph Gungan. <laughs> He's a gonna be He-Man? Look at this beautiful matte painting. This is the closest we get to anything in this movie that actually looks like He-Man. We should point out that these opening credits uh, are, are in no way similar to the 1979 Superman movie. Not in style or music. Right. Or, or <laughs> Completely different and original. It's uh, unrelated. Music by Bill Conti, though, who did the, the classic uh, score to Rocky. I think it was a we'll spare no expense type situation where they hire the best in the business, but they pay them like the bare minimum. <laughs> Here's something I never thought about before, really, until now. It's called Masters of the Universe and not He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. That seems weird. Uh, Maybe they thought general audiences would get confused and think it's a gay porno. Oh. <laughs> You gotta sneak that gay porno in there. (laughs) (laughs) And this is Eternia, beautiful beautiful. Rich, you probably remember it better than I do. Both of you, maybe, but... Why? Are you saying we're old? Is... is, (laughs) Did Eternia look anything like this in the cartoon? You know what? I kind of hated the cartoon. I think the cartoon just looked like whatever the fuck they wanted to do that week. Okay. That's true. This is the second time we've seen this shot. Yes. they, They flip and flop it. Yeah. But you see it multiple times. I I played with the toys first. I I before I was I was in I was in He Man Man before it was hip. <laughs> Rich, Rich he Man yeah. before the cartoon came out, and then I saw the cartoon. Oh boy, there's gonna be He Man He Man cartoon, and here's this foppy pink wearing weirdo. <laughs> Rich is, Rich is like the, the indie music guy who, who liked the band before they went mainstream. Except much more embarrassing. It's a much, much more embarrassing. I was into He-Man before it was cool. <laughs> before In it was my... a cartoon. <laughs> when I was a kid, I wanted to be Gwildor. <laughs> more specifically, I wanted to be Billy Barty. He's in a really bizarre oh. movie called Under the Rainbow with Chevy Chase and Carrie Fisher. Have you ever heard of that movie? No. It, it takes place uh, during the filming of The Wizard of Oz. So it's all the little people, all the midgets they're using for the Wizard of Oz staying in this hotel and wreaking havoc. And it's the most tasteless thing because it treats midgets like they're like they're horrible monsters. It treats them like they're gremlins. Terrible movie. I need uh, to see this. <laughs> but Billy Barney's ba- in that. Is it completely fictionalized? Is oh, that- yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. It's not based on anything real. So this is Gwildor's little secret uh, hobbit hole or whatever. <laughs> oh, here's that shot again. Just flopped. The toys were so awesome. Well, this is the the classic era, the 80s era of make toys first and then make a cartoon that's just a half hour advertisement for the toys. So you can't really complain about the lack of artistic integrity in this film because, well, look at its source material. Please don't get close-ups of Frank Langella's face. (laughs) Yeah, we haven't mentioned Frank Langella. He's the best part of this movie. He's giving it his all. He's trying to play a real villain, unlike uh, Jeremy Irons in the Dungeons & Dragons movie. Who's going completely over the top? Let their blood rain from Frank Langell is trying. In the cartoon, he's just a floating head, a skull, right? Yeah. He Man could have a very successful career here on Earth as a terrible actor. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some good news for you. <laughs> Kindergarten Cop 2 is coming out. Oh my god. I know I know he's got an engineering degree from MIT, but is he really literally a genius? Uh, well... Smarter than you. Well, smarter sure. than you. A lot of people are yeah. smarter than me. <laughs> I, uh, we would have to check what his IQ score is and then I believe it's out. up there, though. Good journey. Good journey. Oh, wh- which way do I go? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One take. Anyway, so here's our lead character, Courtney Cox, in her very first film role. Fre- fresh off the heels of playing Dancing Woman. In Mm -hmm. the uh, Bruce Springsteen video. Yep. Dancing in the dark. This scene, this scene's very Terminator 1-esque. Yes. Yeah. And so Courtney Cox is getting off her shift at the the fried chicken restaurant. (laughs) This is all in the He-Man cartoon. Well, that's when you, when you go to see a He-Man movie, don't you want to see a bunch of drama between a couple of teenagers? No. That's really what you came for. And here we have Robert Duncan McNeil, as some of you may recognize him from Star Trek Voyager. 
who plays the very, very interesting character of Tom Paris. What the hell are you doing? And and also not Tom Paris from the TNG episode with Wesley Crusher, where he gets people killed in a shuttlecraft accident. Wesley stands trial for a fatal air crash. What is your explanation, Mr. Crusher? I have none. How far will he go to hide the truth? There's no evidence, so there's no case. Next time on Star Trek The Next Generation. Hey guys, one guy killed, Rich. One guy. That's enough, Mike. God damn it. Wesley Crusher, of course, did the right thing. Because Captain Picard. Oh no, he didn't. He got caught. <laughs> yeah, he got he caught. He was a jerk. He was a little. Sh- yes. Was a little shit and there. Picard so. yelled at him, and, and he's like, he's like, you, you know, you really disappointed me, and he, uh, whatever. So Tom Paris. Oh God, we're talking too much about Star Trek. Uh, forget <laughs> it. I'll tell you later. We talked right over the part where the midget stole fried chicken. <laughs> I feel bad, like here when he just poured all that barbecue sauce into his mouth. Because that's a, obviously a makeup appliance. I'm just picturing it mm. like pouring down to the inside of the makeup. Yeah, down his little costume. Yeah. Paying work. No, wait, we're cutting from that wacky scene of them eating meat to to this this mournful scene of Courtney Cox uh, being sad about her parents' death. So every children's film should have a scene in the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> now, this whole subplot with her parents is really fucking weird. Yeah. The the whole like idea that they own a plane, the father flew the plane, and then they crashed the plane just seems really pointless. They're trying to make it more interesting, Jay. That's not more interesting, it's supposed though. Supposed to just a car crash? Well, that's boring. Get that sad shit out of the movie. Look at the cosmic key. Where does that gun come from? What is that? Oh, yeah. Why does he have a gun now? I guess he had it. This alien creature looks like a grandma. You know what character should have been in this? Stink or uh, look at this shot. Look at them all standing next to each other. It's just embarrassing. It's a high angle. Sure. When yeah, they, they don't look threatening. When they introduce them, they use a low angle. You yeah. Know? And uh, well, that, yeah, that and they look kind of silly. Well, yeah. The original vision for the sequence was them busting in on a on a, a prom. That would have been full too, prom. That would have been exciting. That would have been exciting. Well, it would have been expensive. That's the. Thing. <laughs> and then and then somebody dumps a, a bucket of blood on Beast Man, and just starts licking it up. He likes oh, it. rich. <laughs> But hey, was that a reference to Carrie? Yeah, it was a reference to Carrie. They're all gonna laugh at you, Beast Man. <laughs> In this movie, it's true. Oh my God! Oh, that's a coincidence. Thank God. Is this the back alley to a gay nightclub? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just left our exciting action scene in an empty auditorium to now have an action scene in a in a dump. This is a first time director, right? And first, last, first and last time director. <laughs> oh, you wow, may find that hard okay. to believe, but. This is a movie that that cheaped out on their director. <laughs> Let's get this nobody. It'll save us some bucks. They probably paid more for the Jimi Hendrix song. <laughs> Slacker. <laughs> Here we have Officer Strickland, who who for some reason, even though they're in like anywhere USA, mid America, he, he's acting like a gruff New York cop. Mm-hmm. Maybe he was busting too many heads in New York, and and they sent him they sent him away. Strickland, we're sending you out to the sticks for a bit. You gotta get your head together, Mister. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta solve the crime of who vandalized the high school prom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. This is where it lost it for me completely. I, I remember seeing this in the theater and this happening and me be, just being like, what? How did we get to this point? You don't like the car? See, these are the scenes between Evelyn and Skeletor that almost feel like a real movie. You can tell it's it's canon films trying to do a bigger thing. Kind of looks like a real movie when you just have to squint. <laughs> How different would the world be if they had made the Spider-Man movie? Spider-Man, the movie. A live-action spectacular directed by Joe Zito. Oh, man. Would it have saved canon? No, because canon mismanaged their films to the point of bankruptcy, Rich. <laughs> yeah, whatever they did with Spider-Man, they would have <laughs> fucked it up. I think they were going to have Toby Hooper direct it. Directed by Joe Zito. It's going to be James Cameron. Directed by Joe Zito. Oh, no, Lizard Man. Bye, Lizard Man. We love you. Oh, no, now the movie's over. All I wanted to hear the director talk about was how many times those guards that can't see <laughs> fell off the edge of the walkway. <laughs> oh, fuck! I want to hear Frank Langella's voice. <laughs> he was actually the inspiration for Bane in The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, <laughs> Why are they throwing Burger King in the sink? He's, he's doing... And some oranges! And some oranges? He threw a rag at him. <laughs> Get out of here. 
Maybe Look at this awkward fight. They're in a tiny kitchen. Look, what if his weakness Ugh. were rags? Then he would have he would have looked like a genius. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, Rich. That looks like a real knife that he really stabs into the table. Oh, yeah, look at that. I would not let this man with no depth perception do that right <laughs> next to my head, but... I went to see it in the theater, and I thought it sucked. This is one of my first movie uh, cinematic disappointments. Yeah, I remember that. Because it wasn't exciting. We're still in this kitchen. It's an exciting kitchen. It's very <laughs> lovely. Oh, my God, look at that. He found their Hawaiian vacation box. Gwildor's like the Jar Jar Binks of this movie. He-Man's the Jar Jar Binks of this movie. <laughs> Why is he so interested in this? <laughs> I'll be right back. What was that weird little movement from He-Man there? They said Skeletor's coming, and he goes like, I gotta go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> It makes him jump straight up in the air. Now, we haven't mentioned Tila here is played by Chelsea Field, uh, who you all remember from Death Spa. Death Spa. It's the place for a killer workout. <laughs> Death Spa. An exercise in terror. A fantastic weight reduction program. People get so thin they disappear. She she did Death Spa after this. Oh, oh, is it possible to to drop so fast? <laughs> it's like the box office uh, returns for the second week of Batman versus Superman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was the, the lead in that, right? No, she was just random female that's in was the she? movie. Yeah. Well, why don't you show off for me? I never waste effort in the gym. Besides, I'm beta. Your VHS. She later on went to become Scott Bakula's wife. Yeah. And still is. She's still married to Scott Bakula. This was an attempt at a big movie. I remember it coming out and it feeling like an event. It feeling like a big blockbuster. And then you, you see the movie and it's like, oh. You knew something was wrong. Oh, even as a little kid, I knew something was wrong. And here's where Courtney Cox turns out to be the stupidest person alive. Look, even if there's a 1% chance her mother is still alive, she has to take it as an absolute certainty. Uh, we were doing some very important secret work. CIA agents, we undercover. We just had to uh, let you think that we were dead. Yeah, you, you now have no sympathy for Courtney Cox for the rest of this movie. Because she's just too stupid to live. I don't, I don't oh, like... and her character's not that great either. Oh. You wanted this thing that He-Man wanted too? <laughs> not a coincidence. Oh, no. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I just did something extremely stupid. Just duck. They won't aim down. This is... <laughs> <laughs> I hope that was a stunt double for Billy Barty there who jumped over that tiny fire. Oh, yeah. Because for, for a little person, that has to be uh, difficult. Oh, they don't care. Plus, this costume is just. Have him run through that fire! <laughs> Maybe that's where a lot of the budget to this movie went. It went towards uh, midget insurance. Oh. <laughs> I bought a fire extinguisher at Kmart. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, we had to cut that from the budget. <laughs> that, that car explosion blew out all the windows of the shops down the whole street. Oh. And they had to come in the next morning and board them up. They didn't fix them. They no, just boarded they, them up. They just boarded them up. <laughs> and then they ran out of town. Uh, here comes Frank Langella. Oh, my God. This is so exciting. <laughs> oh, no. Here come these little flying discs. <laughs> so so they were... Look, oh, Jesus Christ. That shot. Yeah, this... Uh... Why are his arms out like that? What, is he not holding on? <laughs> is, yeah, oh... It's like he's skiing. Oh, look at that man trying not to fall off. <laughs> That's the thing. These discs are just a little too small where it's like, I'm just worried that, that Dolph Lundgren's going to fall over at any moment. He's Oh, he's upside down. Woo. Oh, no. Oh, oh here's no. Here's the greatest couple edits. <laughs> uh, woo. And then now everyone's kind of fighting. <laughs> Did you know the sorcerer, sorceress, went on to play Courtney Cox's mother in Friends. I can't believe Emma's already won. Oh, I remember your first birthday. Ross was jealous of all the attention we were giving you. He pulled on his testicles so hard. <laughs> we had to take him to the emergency room. Oh my God. Isn't that crazy? I did not know that. Because oh, I hated so many Friends. Connection. <laughs> Can this thing move any faster? <laughs> Goodbye. This is really awkward. <laughs> Why did we build this? I can walk. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, so disgusting. Oh, Jesus Christ! 
He-Man says, we're going to have to amputate. And he'll finally use his sword. Yeah. He-Man's a slave now. He doesn't have a sword. Oh, oh. yeah, He-Man's not there. Skeletor took him back to be his slave. <laughs> Whatever that means. His, his shirtless, pantsless slave. This is a whole movie about Skeletor coming out of the closet. <laughs> Does he need the key to open the closet? Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Get more oil for He-Man. <laughs> <laughs> now, just kind of stand there. Flex for me. What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> You're going to whip me or torture me? No. Whip, maybe. Whip, maybe. <laughs> torture if you're into it. Depends. What are you down for, Ian? <laughs> I've got a boner. Oh. Because he's Skeletor. Skeleton. Oh! Bo bone. Oh. Bone, bone, skeleton, bone. It took me a while to get that. And then I wasn't. It was too clever, I think is the problem. Uh, well, it was punny. Too clever. Uh, uh, I don't know. Anyways. I like Billy Barty. Why? Because he's great. <laughs> Why do you look <laughs> he's, so He's, he's a little and charismatic. He's great in UHF. You ever see the movie Robot and Frank? Yeah, it's a good movie. That's a good film. Rich, you should watch that. Robot and Frank? It's called Robot and Frank. It says Frank Langella. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to talk about too much on our commentary. Just check it out. The, the two that ran the company weren't filmmakers. They were more producers who just liked to... Menachem was a filmmaker. Was he? He directed, uh, yeah, some movies for canon. I think hmm. he directed Delta Force and a few others. Oh, title drop. As he looks right into the camera. I, Skeletor. Master of the universe. The powers of the universe are going to turn him into a, a, a Vegas showgirl. <laughs> <laughs> it turns him into the uh, the gatekeeper of the Bifrost. See what what they're doing with the sorceress is good because her powers are being drained and she's turning old. Yeah, that it should have been inverted the same way with Skeletor. He should have been like like a super buff. Uh, young Italian man or something like that. <laughs> and him and He-Man could rub oil all over it. <laughs> and then he slips on his own oil and falls into a pit. <laughs> he slides oh, no. He slides off the end of their uh, their bridge there because there's no uh, railing. There's no rails. There's no rails anywhere. I should have put then... in the railings. Oh, no. <laughs> and then after they're done, he slips off and rolls into the pit. Blackers! Come on, you motherfuckers. All you need is a shotgun to be more effective than He-Man. <laughs> oh, he's just pushing people off the ledge. Everybody stand back and come at him one at a time. They're afraid. Watch, here it comes. Oh, man. He-Man. <laughs> oh, no, He-Man, you pushed the statue over. It did nothing. <laughs> I like that statue, He-Man. It's one of uh, 17 <laughs> statues. Oh. Now we got to fix it. But that one was my personal favorite. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> okay, no. so now here he gets his sword and he shouts, I have the power. But in the context of this movie, that doesn't mean anything. No, it oh, means nothing. Oh, oh that's because the movie's terrible, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> And now, bam, cut to them with no money. Yeah, here's when the budget no, <laughs> Oh, my God. It looks There's like no... a student film. We didn't establish that he had to crack the staff, or that the staff had any power whatsoever. <laughs> he just had it, but now it apparently has undone the, the eye to the universe magic. Yes. And now he just jumps off a cliff. <laughs> and, he, and he yells, ah, as he falls with his mouth shut. <laughs> Although with that makeup, I guess there's not much of a difference. <laughs> Oh, thank God this over this movie. We were all just waiting here. We could have been helping. But <laughs> the lights were out. And now Officer Strickland has like like a hot babe with him. Where'd she come from? Well, in the 15 minutes, they've met and fell in love. Okay. She's not a sex slave. <laughs> She's not. He's not staying there for the sex slaves. Okay. <laughs> it's not what they're implying. So this is all very Wizard of Oz-esque. Going yes. back from... Uh, Oz to Earth. It's gonna be so hard to say goodbye. I love you all too. 
Goodbye, Tin Man. Oh, don't cry. You'll rust so dreadfully. Here, here's your oil can. Goodbye. Now I know I've got the heart, because it's breaking. Goodbye, Lion. You know, I know it isn't right, but I'm going to miss the way you used to holler for help before you found your courage. I would never have found it if it hadn't been for you. I think I'll miss you most of all. Are you ready now? Yes. Say goodbye, Toto. Gildor's got the little gold ribbons in his yeah, beard. Yeah, it's just like a the reference lion. to the cowardly lion. Wasn't Billy Barty in Wizard of Oz? He was. As a old? small child, he was a munchkin in Wizard of Oz. Yep. yep. Poor, poor little Billy Barty. And now it's really bizarre because as Courtney Cox is going through the the portal, she turns around. She's like, wait, Gildor, I want to tell you something. Ah! And then she goes through and doesn't say it. No. And I guess, I guess he just figures it out on his own that she wants to go back in time to before her parents were dead. Yeah. Did he even know about her dead parents? Maybe it was just a, a accident. Strickland has no family back on earth, right? No. Or maybe he does. And that's why he doesn't want to go back. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking alimony. <laughs> Here I have unlimited sex slaves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. and we're not even given like a reveal of the parents. It just cuts to a close up yeah. of her dad reading the paper. You have to have her coming down the stairs. And so, yeah, you slowly. see like over her shoulder or something, and she goes in the room, mm. and the camera spins around, and yep. oh, there's the dad. But they have no. a little magical music sting. Yeah. Oh, Kevin, I'm so sorry. No, he's just sitting there. Yeah. Oh, that would be the director who never directed anything before or ever again. <laughs> There's your answer, Jay. Okay. Oh, my God. He-Man is now tiny, and I keep him in this magic ball. Oh, no. I can't wait to go back to Eternia. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see Eternia someday. Oh, wait, there's Pig Boy. Yes. Richard Sponder. Sponder. What do you, what do you suppose Pig Boy's up to now? Yeah, I don't know. With a with a weird ass last name like that, Richard Sponzer, maybe he's lead to, easy to find. Yeah, and then he'll tell everybody that it was a lie that I said he peed his pants on the <laughs> side. I, I made that up. <laughs> oh wait, but we're about to get our our uh, lead up to the sequel. This is pre Marvel. Mm-hmm. I'll be back. No, you won't. No. Nope. They had to freeze frame on that because immediately after saying that line, Frank Langella tore that makeup off and stormed off the set. He started choking on water. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Well, that's Masters of the Universe from Canon Films. What a quality, quality production. (laughs) Was that that the start of the the after the credits, credits stinger? Was that the first one? It, it's possible, Rich. It's possible. Setting up the He-Man cinematic universe. Anyway, thanks for listening to us talk about He-Man. Oh, sorry. Masters of the universe. Good journey. Oh, oh good, good journey. journey. Good journey. You fucked it up. I did. <laughs>